Now back to the show. This is The Law Show on CL 650. Freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose. Nothing. That's all that left me. <laughs> okay, that's good. Uh, good one, Dwayne. Good song to interest, intro, intro us into uh, the next segment of the Law Show here, talking about family law. And we have David Halkett from uh, Macquarie Hunter. He's a partner there in the uh, family law department. You head that program up there, the department. So we've talked about spousal support. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to switch over to children, and I'm sure it's uh, probably the number one concern when it you're is. going through a divorce. So how are children protected under the, the Family Law Act? Um, well, there's uh, a couple of factors that the children you deal with. first with the um, guardianship issues. Mm-hmm. So um, it's we don't use in the provincial statute the word custody anymore or access. Hmm. They were deemed to be pejorative terms. Now the divorce act, which applies to married couples, that they still it still uses those terms. The custody. Well, and divorce, why the change of language? Um, it was deemed that they people were fighting over the word custody. Mm-hmm. And access, because they said you shouldn't really be an access parent when you've been a full parent mm-hmm. all along. And there's there's some merit to that, although um, we old timers like me still think of it in custody and access terms. Um, all you've done is you're just fighting over the same issue, just a different term, sure. terminology. So under the family lock, we'll deal with uh, just the provincial act um, for now. We have guardianship. So if you are living with your with the parent, the other parent of the child, with the child, you're deemed a guardian of the child. And subject to a court application or a decision or an agreement, each of you have what they call Section 41 parental responsibilities equal. That in, that's just your overall general parental responsibilities to start a lawsuit for them, uh, day-to-day care of them. Signing forms. Consent for, forms, consent exactly. Consent forms, right. Exactly. And the right to make medical decisions, school decisions, the mm-hmm. general kind yeah. of thing that we do as parents. I have found that the majority of my cases, the parents don't disagree on what's best for the children. There's always going to be some that will disagree on what school they should go in, what program, but generally they can agree on the responsibility. They want the best thing for the kid. Exactly. So that deals with decision-making for the children and care and control and where they live. Then, there, of course, there's the second aspect is child maintenance, which is uh, – a lot payable under both the Divorce Act and the Family Law Act, and it's based on the the numbers are based on the federal child support guidelines. So this is the only area in in family law where the federal uh, rules come into play. Um, well, the the federal government in 1997 came up with the child support guidelines. It was based on a decision uh, after someone sued uh, under the charter, saying that taxing child support was actually um, discriminatory because it was mostly women that were paying support on money that was there for the children. So the federal government said, okay, after May 1st of 97, no one's going to pay child tax on the child support anymore, but we're going to set these tables and that's what it's going to be based on. Hmm. The province then adopted them as the provincial child support guidelines um, for cases where the parties weren't married and the divorce act didn't apply. So it's based on your income, number of children, and the residency of the children. So if you don't have 40% of the of the time with the children and you make $65,000 and there's two children, you look at a table and it tells you exactly what you should pay for child maintenance. It varies province to province. And what is that based on? Like, uh, is, is, so, so what is child support? What are you paying for? Okay. You're paying to uh, feed them, mm-hmm. clothe them, provide a roof over their head, and to some extent equalize the standard of living between the two households. So if dad moves out and he's making a ton and mom is on social assistance, it's not fair that the children would have a separate lifestyle in two houses. So they shouldn't go to dad's house and have PS4 and Xbox and, you know, every st- channel on, on TV, whereas they would go to mom's house and have just basic cable and no video games and mm-hmm. such. You know, it's a silly example, but basically that's what it, what it comes well, down to. That would be important with my kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah it's mine all too. about the Xbox. Yeah. So they try to equalize as much as possible the standard of living for the children in the two homes. And that's just for the, for the child maintenance. That's your table amount. So that it's based on income, number of children, where they live. Above and beyond is what we call Section 7 extraordinary expenses. That is expenses above and beyond your food, clothing, and putting a roof over their head. So daycare costs, for example. That's a big one for children under, say, 10 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Then there's uh, costs for if they go to private school, that's divisible above and beyond, uh, proportionate to the representative incomes, the two respective incomes, I should say. Then we have um, other costs for extracurricular, so hockey or football or piano or figure skating, those kind of things. Those are also shared proportionally between the parties. So um, it, it, there's a lot of factors, but the main thing is for the table is where the children live and how much do the parties earn. Okay, now you, I've heard stories, or maybe it's an, just anecdotal, that you know, uh, say for example, the father's paying child support and the mother, and the mother's using it for things other than looking mm-hmm. after the children, and then comes back and says, "Well, Johnny needs new shoes." And he says, yeah. "Well, I'm paying you already. Mm-hmm. Uh, you must get that all the time." I do, and so what I what I would tell the the payor in that instance is, you don't have to buy shoes above and beyond unless they were for like skates for the hockey team or something that's above and beyond because the shoes would be covered by the base maintenance i would tell the recipient that one as long as your maintenance is up to date you can't be going and asking for extras for like a pair of jeans or that that's what the maintenance is for Mm -hmm. and but you are right that happens a lot you know the i'll have one person say well i pay all this money and it's not going right to the children and you really can't you can't really control that. No, uh, what? I would say the mom goes on a vacation with her mm-hmm. new boyfriend. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean that must be a frustration, right? You it, see it, these things happen. Oh, I, I see it all the time, and, and and it's amazing how those little things can be a, like the little uh, speck in in the oyster that that just grinds at the parties. Mm-hmm. But what I tell them is, when you give the money or you pay the money for the child support, it goes into an overall pot that the person that re- receives it. The children benefit in other ways. So say, for example, they got $2,000 of child support and it goes into a pot. That $2,000 may not get spent on the children, but they have a better life because it's added to another $4,000 of income. Sure. And so you have to explain to the person as much as possible that um, it, it doesn't – you don't have to see a dollar for dollar going right to it. Now, the Section 7 expenses have to be spent on the activities. Right. So you can't say... So if you have, uh, like your son, as you mentioned, plays yep. rep hockey, and, and it's going to cost $5,000 for that season, yep. I'm sure that's at the low end. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. You, you just you just keep all the receipts and then divvy them up according yeah. to your income. Exactly. And and so that you have to, you only re- get reimbursed when you actually put the expense out. Okay. All right. So that's complicated. It, it can be, yeah. Uh, it was supposed to make it simpler, but all you've done is created fights over other issues mm-hmm. with the money. And are people pretty good about this when it comes to the kids, or is this one area where they really dig in? Sometimes the party wants to reduce how much he or she pays, so they'll fight to make sure they get over 40%, which allows you to ask to reduce the, the amount of money. Oh, so, but, they, so they'll say, I want them one extra night yeah, a to, week just to so they can reduce that. the amount, sure. But generally, payors don't mind paying for their children. They know it's their children, and... There's the one long-lasting benefit of the relationship is that you have the children mm-hmm. and you want them to turn out well. So I have less, fewer people complaining about having to pay the child maintenance than obviously spousal maintenance. Sure. But then if you combine the two together, that's a big check every month. It can be, especially yeah. when the children are young. You can be looking at paying upwards of, upwards of 55% of your income, net disposable income, to another party, but you still have to pay your own rent and put exactly. gas in your car. Exactly. Now, there's this chart here um, that I saw that comes from Stats Canada, based mm-hmm. on 2011 mm-hmm. general social survey, saying child support amounts um, really range between three and five thousand dollars annually per child. That seems low to me, knowing what it costs to keep kids today. Yeah. Um, now, granted, this is older, but still, is that? That's, is well, that low I, to you? It, it does, but I think that's because it takes into account um, people at the lower end of income who some of their child maintenance may be only $100 a month. Sure. Yeah. It's, most of my clients would be paying more than, um, more than five to $600 a month in child maintenance. Well, it's interesting. Um, the next one down is either 1000 to 3000 or over 10,000. Yeah. It seems to be kind of... <laughs> there's, there's a big jump, yeah. <laughs> and it depends, you know, it's not in... Um, these numbers, it depends, I guess, where it is. Maybe some provinces, if you weigh out the different provinces, like, you know, Newfoundland may have a lower income sure. or, or Saskatchewan or that. 
in the lower mainland, usually people are probably paying more than that mm -hmm. in a year. And these are hard things to bring up, I'm sure. They are, yeah. When you tell your client how much he or she may have to pay, um, <laughs> sometimes the look on their face is, is almost priceless. Yeah. You know, it's... Well, actually, you can't put a price yeah, on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and here is the amount. Yeah. yeah. Those are hard things to talk about, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, we talked about uh, child support. Um, then we'll get into custody yep. and how that works and who decides, you know, depending on the age of the child, mm -hmm. um, how are you going to split who's looking after the children? Uh, it's all about family law on today's show. We have David Halgett here, partner at Macquarie Hunter. We'll continue the conversation on The Law Show next on CL 650. There's more of the show still ahead. This is The Law Show on CL 650.